I can't think of any better way to start a moose hunt than just to break into the alpine to find two young bulls feeding in the willow. We're into the middle of October, and this is my favorite time of year to hunt moose. You know, I really enjoy hunting in the, the pure rut where you can call them in and interact with them like that, that's great. But to see a number of different moose, I really like it late season when those bulls and the cows are starting to move up out of the river basins, move up high, and that's where I can spot and stalk, which is my favorite way to do it. You could actually see the young bull licking his lips. So, I mean, the rut is over, but there's still interest there, especially on behalf of these younger bulls, because they probably haven't had any action. I was able to hold him up with the cow call, and then after he's kind of got used to that, and he started to walk off, that I grunted to him and stopped him again. So there's still a little bit of play here. Now, can I call a, a big bull in? I don't know, we'll see. Had a pretty wild left front. After we got up into the Alpine and now we're, you know, we've seen a couple young bulls. We picked up a good bull here, probably low 60s, fairly long, just uh, narrow palms, really, really neat fronts. And I had to take a really good look at him to make a decision whether that's a bull that we want to take or not. This early in the hunt, I'm going to pass up on him. Maybe he's here in the next few days and that's our best option. <laughs> Four o'clock in the evening. We don't have a whole pile of daylight left. We're gonna unload here, everything right here. This is a great spot to camp. We've got massive valley we can look at both directions. We can get up on top of this mountain over here and look on the other side. I love getting up a little bit high. So in the morning, you step out of your tent and there's just all kinds of area to glass. So you're not wasting any time climbing up mountains in order to see stuff. top of the mountain now and looking down to the east side and there's a cow, a good sized bull. I believe it's the same one that was over here earlier and a young bull. So we're seeing quite a few moose today for the short time we've been out here. So we're in the right spot. As we cover this whole country, make sure that no stone is unturned. I think we'll find ourselves a good bull, but it's starting off in a positive direction for sure. I'm pretty excited. Within 30 minutes, we picked up 11 different moose in this drainage. Eight cows and three bulls. One bull is really nice. You know, he's not super wide, but what he does have is he's got good wide palms and all the way out to the front. That's kind of my broomed off ram equivalent, and it's pretty tough to turn away from a heavy broomed ram. This bull out here, he's got six cows with him, and then there's one satellite bull out there too. So it's pretty neat. We're not gonna be able to make it happen tonight. So we're gonna go back, set up camp, and make a plan for tomorrow. But if I don't find something else that's amazing, that's really the bull that, that I think I'm gonna take tomorrow if I can get on him. It's 
been a great day. It's been a long push to get in here. Um, you know, since we got here, we've seen about 16 moose already. We've got our eyes set on one bull and we'll see if we can make it happen. Beautiful morning. The sun's just crested the mountain over there. We're just getting first light and looking down into the valley where the moose were last night. So they've only moved, you know, 150 yards from the same place we left them. So that's great. It's a little bit windy up here. So I'm trying to find that bull. So standing behind ATV certainly helps as a windbreak. Just watching these cows and the bulls interaction down there. The rut isn't over. He's got six cows in here, satellite bull. He's protecting them. He's still rounding them up, which we saw last night. And then some of the cows are battling for his attention. So this rut is not over. So we may have a good shot at uh, getting in on him with archery equipment. The moose are all in the timber just to the left of the drainage. So there's a first knob there that I want to get up on and be able to look down, hopefully can see through the trees down to where they are, be able to pick that bull up. If we can pick him up, I think I can, you know, work my way down to him and just hopefully you don't bump a cow, but that's the loose plan right now. And without a plan, <laughs> you just stand here and watch moose all day and do nothing. So we're going to get down in there and we're going to see if we can get it real close. The uh, stock starts from the top and doesn't end until you're on the animal. And this could be hours. So what I do is I make a mental map of what this thing looked like from the top of the mountain and what I think the features that I am going to be able to pick up from down in the valley. Because if you don't have a proper mental picture of what you think that that land is gonna look like or where you need to go to get to that animal and you get down in it, everything looks different. So I pick out a number of different features that I know that is the landmark that I need to be to the left of and then I'm gonna hit this drainage and then I'm gonna to go to the top of the drainage and then up to a knob, the first knob, and then I'm gonna work my way to the second knob. So those are all things that I think about from the top of the mountain so that when it's go time and you're trying to figure out where that moose in this situation is, then you have a, basically a road map of how to get to that moose of where you last saw him. I've just lost that much more elevation that I don't think I'm gonna be able to see them anymore. So now we kind of have to make a move get over there, get up on that knob, and hopefully they haven't moved very far. I don't expect that they will. There's a bit of a piece between here and there, and that time frame, anything can happen. Right now, I think we're within a half a kilometer. You know, the wind is good. It's fairly windy even down here. Hopefully that's to our advantage. The only thing I do see is about that much of his rack tucked up underneath this big fat spruce. So he's bedded down right now. The problem is, is we don't see any cows because they're bedded down too. And going in there could be a very big challenge. Two hundred and fifty four yards. <laughs> 